Well, welcome back. This is the second part of Area Stay Unit 3, Area Stay 2, um, responding to antigens. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to do this in two parts because uh, the first bit looks at pathogens um, which produce the antigens, and then we'll look at what our immune system does to respond to their presence because, of course, that's what it's all about. And this is going to obviously send signals. We're going to continue looking at communication. Um, so cellular and non-cellular pathogens, our lymphatic system, another body system that's involved in our, our immune response. What are antigens? And then looking at the innate or non-specific part of our immune response and the adaptive or specific part of our immune response. We'll do that, that's those last two in the next uh, podcast. So, I know I helped write the course, but I'm, I can't remember what we talked about when we talked about all these pathogens. I think there's a desire to sort of move away maybe from talking about them in too much detail, but I think you should still have an awareness of some of the major uh, important parts of them. They all produce antigens, which is the important part. That's the signal which we respond to. So the antigens are important, but there are groups of living things and non-living things that would like to cause us harm. Well, that's not quite true. They're looking for food, they're looking for places to live themselves, and we're just a a relatively good one for that. So bacteria are ancient cells, they're prokaryotic, they go way back before our own body cells evolved, um, and they are in fact capable of infecting animals and plants. And of course there's your classic diagram here, there's DNA just spread within here, there's no organelle structure, there's a membrane out around the outside, but within it there's pretty much just membranes and stuff. Um, you'll note of course it does have ribosomes, they're self-replicating. Um, we tend to classify them on shape, so they can be circles, cocci, they can be um, rods, bacillus, or spherical, not spherical, um, spirochetes, so there's a sort of spirally shape to them. Um, some have a tail, some have a flagella, some have cilia, so they're mobile. Some use oxygen, some don't. Um, they have different nutritional requirements. And there's a classic stain called a gram stain, and you're either gram stain positive or gram stain negative. And to do that gram stain testing on a disease is useful because you can straight away remove half the bacteria you could be dealing with and the treatments are different so it starts to help work out what we should be doing and of course the great thing about bacteria is that we can in fact control them well we are using our antibiotics a bit too liberally so we're losing control over them but essentially we have had the ability to control bacteria through antibiotics um, because they are living and so they can be killed. Um, so because that bacterial cell does not belong, it's not part of you, it lacks the markers on their surface, on the membrane, that state self. They have what you would call non-self antigens. Now, from the perspective of the bacteria, it's a self antigen, it's a self marker. But in this situation, of course, if it's inside your body, it's presenting to your immune system as non-self. And antigen essentially stands for antibody generator. So that non-self marker will cause your body to make antibodies against it. And we'll talk more about that in the second half of this podcast. The second podcast. Um, but it's those antigens which present the disease. And often a lot of the disease that we have in response, the symptoms we have in response to bacteria are really in response to their um, uh, metabolic wastes, because if they're in large quantity in your blood system or in your in your gut, and they're producing great amounts of waste, and that waste is crossing into your blood system, then you can start to have nausea and just diarrhea and all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's where a lot of that disease comes across in our gut, because we have a huge gut flora. Bacteria have to find their way across a skin level, so an epithelial layer of the skin. If it's intact, intact's the important word, if it's intact, then there's no, no way in. If there's a cut or an infection that's causing that to open up, then you can get in. And of course that epithelial layer lines our digestive system, our um, reproductive systems, our respiratory systems, uh, and so any damage in any of them will cause infection, will allow infection to come in. And it's the same for plants, plants throw up bark and things. Um, and we'll talk about what happens later. Viruses are non-living. 
Now they've got a nucleic acid, and they can either be DNA or they can be RNA. And RNA containing viruses we call retroviruses, and HIV is a, a classic retrovirus. Um, so they can't produce, they can't reproduce by themselves. They don't have both. They don't have ribosomes, so they're unable to actually reproduce, which means we don't consider them to be living. However, that also means they can remain dormant for long periods of time. But what they do is act as a parasite, and they inject their DNA or RNA into the host cell, and the host cell does the replication for them. And viruses, of course, will attack plants and animals. Yeah. They're just good for hosts, they're looking for some of the food, some where they can grow their babies. Um, they do, unfortunately, present, well, they do, fortunately, possibly, present non-self antigens. They don't have self-markers. They do have markers which our body recognises as um, as non-self and will produce antibodies for them. And our vaccinations have in the past been based around protection against viruses because we didn't have antibiotics or antivirals, sorry. Um, <clears throat> antibiotics don't work on viruses, which is one of the problems. We have a lot of people using antibiotics for what they shouldn't because it has no impact. Um, but we have been producing in the past, in the recent, recent years, a whole lot of antivirals. And one of the great successes of CSIRO was to develop a thing called Lenza against the flu. It's an antiviral drug for flu. Um, and it was uh, obviously sold on and, and turned into a great uh, product by another company. But uh, one of the big, big advances in flu um, treatment, uh, not vaccinations, but uh, treatment for the, when you've actually got it. So um, antivirals are certainly something that people are trying to produce ways of blocking their ability to either Add, uh, inject their DNA into your cell, or for their cells to then erupt out of the, the cell that's been infected, so we don't get the virus spreading. Um, so they're quite successful. There's also a whole lot of other organisms which are eukaryotic that um, also like to live on us because we're such warm, friendly beings with lots of food and, and fluid, and, and we are warm because we're warm blooded. Um, so, protozoans are one of those. Prozoans tend to have three groups, essentially. It's the flagellates, so they've got tails for swimming. Um, the sporozoans, which are something like plasmodium is a sporozoan, which causes malaria. It uh, obviously produces by spores, and those spores get picked up by uh, mosquitoes in this case. The succedonians, which produce amoebic acid um, dysentery. Again, don't have flagella for, mo for mobility, but use cilia. Um, generally, to get these guys around the place, they need a, a host. And so in the case of... Um, Malaria, of course, the, the uh, mosquito, the Anopheles mosquito, acts as a host and injects more of the spores of the plasmodium into the, the host's, uh, sorry, into the, uh, yeah, into the host's um, bloodstream. Um, the best way to treat these, of course, is to try and break the life cycle. And if we can cover up our skin with clothing and um, insect repellents and sleep under mosquito nets and things, then we tend to break the cycle for um, malaria. Mosquitoes still live, but malaria doesn't get to pass through humans. Uh, so there's ways of breaking the, the system. Of course, widespread use of chemicals to kill mosquitoes also breaks the system, but has other things wrong with it. Worms tend to live inside our guts, particularly because our guts are such lovely, warm, wet, food-rich places. And so you've got some three different types of worm there. Um, as you can see, hookworms have these wonderful hooks. The roundworm there has ways of attaching itself as well. These little roundworms coming out of an anus. Um, and they live within our, in our system. And they act as parasites. We'd all have them in our guts at the moment, probably. But it's when they become out of control, we, they become an issue. And of course, they can probably easily treated, well, they are now easily treated with chemicals, and we can kill them quite, quite quickly. Um, but again, one of the biggest problems with these guys is the fact that they will cause um, your intact skin to become not intact. These sharp teeth, so I pointed at the screen, <laughs> these sharp teeth, these cutting parts, will of course open up the skin. And so you want them gone, because they will cause other infections to get in. Um, Arthropods, another group, there's little ticks and uh, lice that live on the, the surface. Um, and as you can see, this one here is, this is just one beast over time lapse photography. 
slowly taking up blood and they become very very enlarged and again the biggest problem with these guys is, is that they do tend to open up your intact skin if they're living on your surface they're not necessarily a major issue um, not great they probably you know cause you to scratch which again causes you to open up your own skin but again really reasonably easily killed off and treated with um, with chemicals oops what's happened there why are we moving there we go um, <clears throat> we also talk about the fungi and the umocytes. We used to think about umocytes as fungi, but uh, they're now seen as a separate group. Um, and fungi, again, tend to live on the skin, so things like uh, thrush and ringworm, and, uh, which is not a worm, obviously. Um, tinea <clears throat> tend to live on the skin and are, again, easily treated with chemicals and, and dealt with. If they, are, if they do stay for too long, they can open up the skin and allow for other infections, so they break that barrier which is their, their biggest concern. And then there's, oops, yeah, I won't pause too much on that. Then there are two other things that we talk about. They're viroids. Now, viroids are essentially a single strand of RNA that has no protein coat, no membrane. So it's described as naked. These attack plants, and one of the um, most common is the, the viroid which causes plant leaves to skeletonize. So you end up with all the Flyman and zyme and no um, photosynthetic tissue, damaging of course for a, a, a plant. There are no known animal viroids, um, but we wouldn't want one either. Would we? It's very hard to control a piece of a piece of protein or piece of RNA just drifting around. Um, and the other that we know quite well now, mainly for mad cow disease, is the prion. Um, very hard to find a prion. That's actually a, a dime grammatic representation of the shape of this particular prion, the Kruzfeldt Jakob disease. Um, but then naked protein. This is a piece of protein which infects the host. So a bit like a, a virus that gets into the host and looks for some way of, way of reproducing itself. In the case of Kruzfeldt Jakob disease, it tends to enter the nervous system and make its way to the brain and cause brain degeneration quite rapidly. Hence mad cow that also occurs in cows. Um, Interesting enough, it was uh, quite common in the um, uh, headhunter um, cannibal populations of Papua New Guinea, as they used to eat the brain of the person they just, you know, the victor, the, the victor would eat the brain of his um, uh, opponent to gain his wisdom. However, of course, he also gained his prions, so it can be quite a problem in those situations. Um, and that's our pathogens, all presenting antigens in some way for our body to respond to, which we'll come to next.